see that uh, when we go out of the earth, so our rockets are not that powerful. But uh, to escape from earth, we need 11.2 kilometer per second velocity. Because we cannot, our rockets are not powerful, we cannot eject so fast. So what we did, we did another mechanism, it's called a sling slot mechanism. We'll go into elliptical orbit around Earth and then increase it over a period, it took almost 15 days to change it to a position where it could achieve the escape velocity and then it could come out of Earth, then it is a free flying towards the moon. But once you reach the moon, that is the, we have to reach in 100 kilometers. We cannot go just like that. It is called, the tra it is exactly the way we have left Earth. We have to reach Earth's moon, uh, the moon uh, orbit in exactly opposite way. Now when it reached, it is the maximum elliptical major axis. And then we have to, you see, while es escaping from Earth, you know, we have to do a, a booster fire that is we have to increase the velocity now to getting captured by the moon the, we have to now go to get a retro fire that they fire the rocket engine in the opposite direction to reduce its velocity uh, and then almost by six such trials it will be it will be able to reach the 100 kilometer orbit the while on earth you know it was very easy to because the distance is smaller. So our antennas and systems could measure the Earth's, the orbital parameters precisely. But the, now the distance is very large, 3.4 like kilometers from Earth. Now from that antenna when you measure from this distance, the accuracies are poor. So we have to observe for larger period and then fire thrusters. So this will take today, it is uh, 5th August. And they probably tomorrow they'll start as, as first uh, retro fire, and uh, this will continue till 23rd. It, is, it will take almost 20 days, and because the, the estimation time needed is uh, much more because the distance is large, and and if the uh, it is not measured properly, we may not we can even go and crash on the moon. So it is important that uh, we need to measure the orbits very precisely and do the retrofire. And uh, another disadvantage of moon surface, the moon's mass is very uneven. So when it, uh, the orbit, you know, less than 100 kilometers we reach for accidentally, then what will happen that the, our orbits will have a lot of perturbation. That, because it's from normal standard elliptic orbit, it will have a lot of perturbation. So because of the densities varies very widely on the moon. So for this purpose, these estimations are very properly needed and it, it will take actually more time to get into moon's orbit than to have go out of Earth's orbit. The lunar mission is very important for Earth. One may ask, you know, the Neil Armstrong landed on moon in 1969 and why after so long time we are trying. You see that they, we are trying for different thing. And when human being reached moon, they just wanted to reach moon. But uh, today's date, if we want to get out of, of Earth's atmosphere and go to say Mars, then if you start from Mars, Earth, it, it will take the rocket, it will become very heavy. But imagine we have a situation, we have a rocket manufacturing facility on moon and uh, then we manufacture there, then we have to manufacture a smaller rocket to go to uh, Mars, other Mars or other missions. Now the, it will, the basic fuel is needed is in hydrogen and oxygen and for human survival we we'll need water. Now if water is available on moon, if we can uh, moon, so what we can do, we can also do a human survival and also we can have a fuel for the rockets to burn. Now, you know, that's a, there was a lot of conjecture that a, 
in moon there may be water available in a frozen condition in frozen condition in the lunar craters and especially the southern uh, south pole region now that is where the chandrayaan 1 was configured in fact there was an international mission actually seven countries participated seven countries participated and they they put the payloads to locate water on moon because before that nobody ever bothered to find water but people in the 2000 onwards people were realizing that if you have to make interplanetary mission successful then you have to have a base on the moon and then that and actually i am very privileged to be part of chandrayaan 1 mission where we went for searching of water and they, but then you know when we were searching for water we found out a very a dramatic conclusion because before the before the earlier chandrayaan 1 in 2008 it was understood that the water has come on the moon because of asteroid strikes now for the first time we could realize that the moon water is formed apart from asteroid strikes the water is formed by bombardment of alpha particles from in the solar wind and and they form because that is all the stones you know anywhere there it is actually made of silicon and oxygen that is actually silicon sil- silicon uh, silicate compounds now if they they are hit by a, a, a alpha particle from the solar wind then they break into the oxygen breaks into hydroxyl and uh, water and you know that's actually when we sent that uh, everybody gives credit to the american instruments to finding out the water but uh, it is not it is the india's first uh, uh, payload which hit the moon surface was the mips and uh, that has a mass spectrometer and when it hit you know it was actually showing a molecular mass of 17 and 18 which corresponds to hydroxyl ion and water as and when it was approaching the surface there it was increasing but you know in our indian establishment if something is not certified by westerns we do not believe ourselves so we actually oh, wasted much time to debate that the weather will carry the moisture in the payload from earth and that is what being seen and i must give credit to this fantastic di- discovery of mukbul ahmed who for some unfortunate situation he had to leave isro and uh, his instrument could find out and all of this but then when the american instrument m cube and and that uh, their synthetic aperture radar confirmed that uh, yes there is a water there and and the most important the m cube showed what the observation of uh, uh, of uh, our mips payload that uh, it has the water is there not just in pole they are also t- available in other parts so it is a minuscule amount and and uh, this and then the theory of formation of water has changed so presently you see the chandrayaan 2 was designed to land in the southern pole and in fact uh, we are not alone they, they, in the search of water there was a japanese mission there was an israeli mission but unfortunately they both also perished before reaching that place Uh, after our chandrayaan 2 mission and in chandrayaan 2 mission we also lost our lander but we are repeating this experiment at a 70 degree latitude which are actually we are 300 km from the south, south pole of the moon so that we can what we have measured through remote sensing it is you know it is like a taking a camera from a long distance and predict what the material is one can argue no what you are seeing is not the right one all the conclusions you have drawn are, until unless you have a physical verification the scientists do not just go by conjecture or theory so now that our mission is to go and 
probe the surface and we expect we will be able to see physically probing that uh, there is the water on the surface because the temperature is so low it will be remaining frozen there. My career in this row, it spanned from 1984 to 2021. My basic contribution was building synthetic aperture radar payload. And it is a very important uh, instrument for remote sensing instrument, which can see day, night, through cloud, through moisture, through dust, or any other thing. And, and I, I, was, I have built that the RISAT-1 synthetic aperture radar and RISAT-2 series of synthetic aperture impact radars which are now flying, that is an X-band and a C-band radars. And the, in fact, Chandrayaan-2, I had a three contributions. One is that the sending the first dual frequency synthetic aperture radar. See, what was done in Chandrayaan-1 was an only an S-band radar, but uh, we sent, for Americans, we sent in the same mass a polarimetric synthetic aperture radar in L and S-band. I had a contribution. And, to building this because that the challenge was not only achieving these two frequencies, synthetic, but they have to be compact, co-located and of a very small mass. And uh, we could achieve that. And uh, this becomes a mainstay in finding out the amount of water in the craters. When you make a two different frequency measurement, they penetrate differently and give two different signatures. From that we can estimate what is the probable amount of water. Chandrajan 1 detected there is a possibility of water pressures. Chandrajan 2, which is uh, the orbiter is still flying and it will fly for another five years and we are estimating repeatedly the amount of water present there. And uh, Chandrajan and I also built that uh, two other instruments that is the IIRS, that's a uh, infrared uh, spectrometer. In fact, that was a uh, fully made in India and they uh, made at a very cheap cost. And also, you will be surprised because we all talk of MRO and all that uh, the, even the American mission of Moon Reconnaissance Missions, MRO, is actually having a camera with a resolution of two meters. But uh, we built in Chandrajan 2 a resolution of better than one meter. We actually, the sharpest images on the moon can come from our cameras. And uh, this was a very, very creditable one, but uh, for, for some reason or another, you know, our country, we do not give that importance of this achievement. It is the highest resolution camera flying over there. I have a satisfaction to building them and the Chandrajan 2, the configuration, because by that time I was the director of the center and space application center, I was also the director of physical research laboratory. So it was, so the review committees and all, I was there to build this configuration and they, it had a, the Chandrajan 2 lander, though it was not a job of space application center, but it had a two, one major instrument, radar altimeter, the KU band radar altimeter that was built by my team. And they, that was, and with that only the landing will be possible. Even today the landing will be possible through this uh, altimeter. And they, all the communication equipments also built with, uh, from SAC. And they, what we are presently doing there, we are actually repeating the Chandrajan 2 lander as well as the uh, Pragyan rover. Uh, but instead of the orbiter, because we has to be carried, what we have, the orbiter's a skeleton model, we call it a uh, propulsion module, along with a uh, solar panel and communication antenna, because the lander and rover have to communicate through Earth, through another satellite instead of an other satellite we have a, this propulsion module through which will communicate will come to know what is happening whether everything is working fine so that we the communication equipment is sort of built it and they will have a only difference we have done we have taken precaution 
we we probably suspect that they, we had a last moment addition of fifth engine in the lander which created this trouble so we removed this lander uh, this fifth engine in the present one and it is now only four engine lander and they also we have increased the fuel by 300 kg in the lander so that you know we have a chance of a hovering around a 60 meter radius so that we find a nice spot to land so these two changes we have made and probably and i am hopeful and i am also confident that they will be able to achieve this because isro always has the ability they never take a failure face down they learn from it correct it but all said and done you know no amount of engineering and science can make anything perfect to a hundred percent even a god is not perfect so i believe that uh, even if the very remote chance of any mishap or any malfunction and, and isro this time they have taken another philosophy of qualification the first one chandrayaan 2 lander we had taken a philosophy of coalition qualification it is by success criteria but this time we have exhaustively simulated all possible failure conditions we can imagine and we have inbuilt that mechanical electrical propulsion and the software correction in the system and it is to the best of our knowledge and understanding it is made quite foolproof which was not there the Chandrajan 2 lander so I am confident that we will be successful. My name is M. Tapan Misra. I have been, I have been worked in a space application center for 37 years and I have been rose to become the director of space application center. Also I headed the physical research laboratory for some time and then from I was promoted to a senior advisor to the chairman ISRO and after my superannuation I have now started a new startup called the CISIR Radar Private Limited. It is in the Newton area and which will build, already built a drone based synthetic aperture radar and we are going to build also space ball synthetic aperture radar at a low cost and providing a much better service to agriculture, mining and also the, for the military.